You're listening to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the community for the best sales and marketing professionals in the aviation industry. You can't learn to fly just from a book. You learn from other pilots who know the tools, the skills, and the territory. Your hosts, John and Paula Williams, are your sales and marketing test pilots. They take the risks for you and share strategies, relevant examples, hacks, and how-tos. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you won't miss a thing. Welcome to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying episode number 102, Inbound Call Disasters and How to Avoid Them. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm Paula Williams. And I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you ladies and gentlemen out there sell more products and services in the aviation land. Absolutely. Um, and if you would like to reply to this or make comments or anything else, um, we look for the hashtag AvGeekMarketing, uh, and uh, we'll reply to any tweet, comment, question, or anything else that you'd like to say, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the big ideas in this episode are, um, number one, we spend a lot of time and money encouraging more inbound calls. That's really the focus of a lot of our marketing efforts is getting people to call you, right? Absolutely. Um, so those inbound calls are an incredibly valuable source of sales. Would you agree? And perishable. Yes. <laughs> the third uh, big idea here is that most companies handle inbound calls really, really badly. And I'm talking big aviation companies that handle this really badly, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You'd agree? Yeah. I mean, some of the smaller ones do a better job. Absolutely. So, yeah, as But a then some of the smaller ones do them badly as well. That's true. But you would think, you know, of all the things um, that you would expect from an aviation company of, of all things especially the ones that advertise great service and personalized and customized and, and all then, of this then stuff. You, then you get into a phone tree you can't get out of. No <laughs> kidding. Exactly. So this really is the number one most frustrating way to ruin your marketing. Um, you know, you can spend a lot of money with us or with any other marketing agency uh, doing fantastic ads and um, you know, really great lead generation activities and really great PR and other kinds of things that get your phone ringing, but then you ruin it all <laughs> if you answer the phone badly, right? Or don't answer. Or don't answer, exactly. So, um, first of all, let's talk about the solution to this, and then we're going to talk about some of the things that can go wrong and then how we can fix it. So, storyboarding we talked about last time, uh, and we had a couple of questions about it, you know, people saying, you know, I see what you mean by that, but I'm not sure exactly how you do it. So we thought we'd give you an example. Um, you know, this is a storyboard for a cartoon. Basically, all it is is you just walk through each step visually of the process, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're a process engineer, you can call this process mapping if you feel better about that. Um, if you're familiar with the movie industry um, or with cartoons or anything else, it's kind of a, an easier, simpler way to visualize it. You don't have to be a process engineer or a PMI or you know any of those other things to to make this work. You just have to think uh, in smaller steps. You know what happens first, what happens next, what happens next, what happens next, and then he says, and then they say, and then the scene shifts, and you know those kinds of things. So who's doing what in which scene? Um, and we ran across a statistic actually while we were sitting there waiting for the movie. <laughs> You know those things that you see when you're in the movie theater mm -hmm. and they're spending time just, you know, uh, oh, showing yeah, you stuff? Oh, yeah, that was down at that uh, theater we went to. Mm hmm And they said that The Matrix had over 500 different storyboards to get through the movie. Exactly, which is a lot of storyboards, but often the more storyboards you have, the better your outcome is. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons that that movie was so good is because everything was thought through. You know, the less you leave to chance, the better things tend to turn out, right? Yep. Okay. So now let's talk about storyboarding inbound calls. Um, this is often what happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So basically, you do search engine optimization on your website so that when people search for 
as an example, aviation marketing, they find us or FBO marketing or MRO marketing or whatever. They end up on our website. And now, of course, there's lots of ways that they could respond to that. They could send an email, they could send um, you know, a text, they could schedule an appointment or whatever. But the most common way, and especially the most common way of people that end up being our customers, is that they pick up the phone and they call our office, right? Yes. Okay, and you do that too, right? Your phone is your thing, right? My, say that again. The phone is your thing. You don't do. <laughs> you don't do emails, you know, to people that you don't know all that much. You you generally, if you want something, you pick up the phone and call them, right? Yeah, I mean that was a holdover from a long time ago when phones were it. Right, but. But I still much prefer yeah. that because then I know. One, they got the message. Two, mm -hmm. they didn't misinterpret it. If they did, I correct them on the spot. Yeah. And uh, three, I get a response. Yeah, and John actually has a lot in common with most of the people that buy from us and that most of the people that buy from a lot of aviation companies. Um, you know, they're college-educated male, over 30, you know, um, possibly former military, you know, there's lots of demographics that John actually matches. <laughs> so he's kind of our test market for a lot of things. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, people will send me an email first or they'll fill out a form on my website. Um, no, they won't, you know. <laughs> I mean, younger people might, but a lot of times people think, well, that's just going to go into a black hole or I don't want to mess with it or I don't know if I want to commit to filling out a form yet. I want to just talk to somebody, right? Right. I mean, there's the occasional person that will do that, but you, so you have to have them there. Exactly. So that has to be one of the methods that works really well. If you're in the aviation industry, this is probably your number one priority is making sure that you answer calls well. So they find you on your website, you know, because they looked you up on Google. They could find you in an article. Let's say you got something published in Aviation Week or Aviation eBrief or General Aviation News or, um, you know, some uh, industry publication, um, DOM magazine, whatever. Um, indicating that you know you've got a new product or uh, that you've solved a problem for a customer and somebody sees that and says wow I want to I want you to I want to talk to you about a problem I have you know and the first thing they're going to do is look up your phone number and call you right yeah in fact I look up phone numbers on websites and if it's not easily there then I go to another website <laughs> exactly um, social media ads and posts a lot of times the call to action for that or one of the possible calls to action should be um, give us a call and let's talk about your situation. Um, conventions and events, you know, whenever we do public speaking, we hand out business cards, you know, um, or we have our phone number on one of the slides or on one of the handouts. So a lot of times after we do one of those education sessions, we get a lot of calls into our office. So, you know, those are all really, really valuable things that we have done a lot of, put a lot of time and energy into making that happen and I'd much rather have them call us than have us have to call them right mm -hmm. okay but what usually happens is when they call our office or when you call any um, office in the aviation industry or pretty much any other these days you end up in some kind of a horrible phone tree right as a matter of fact a very large um, let me say call it a financial organization in our country of which we are fairly decent customers ended up with a new phone tree and one I couldn't get out of so I figured out how to get a hold of them and chewed them up one side down the other and told them that this is not personalized service when you got a phone tree I can't get out of no matter what I do. Exactly. <coughs> yeah, I well have, they changed it. I'm yeah. sure I wasn't the only one calling in but it seemed like it the next day it was changed. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's funny because, you know, one of the companies that we uh, have worked with in the past is a fairly large and well-known aviation company. And you ask them, you know, when we were putting marketing materials together for them, what is your primary um, difference between you and your competitors? And they say service. Okay, great. Service is, is a wonderful thing. You know, we should blast that all over your website and, you know, uh, make sure that that's a really prominent thing. But then, you know, when people see that on your website and then they call your number and they end up in a phone tree, what is that telling them? You know, your call is very important to us. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. That's like, that's like having your 
address your address at gmail.com instead of mm -hmm. at your business name I think it's worse um, yeah actually it is because this this is just disgusting yeah because you know I'm making an effort to reach out to this company that says that they have fantastic service and my very first impression of them is not fantastic service or personalized or anything else it's no. they're treating me like uh, an imposition or a number you know so my effort of calling them is not being rewarded instantly with a good first impression right <laughs> no it's not okay so here's another cartoon that I found. Um, you know, to listen to stupid music for 20 minutes before getting kicked out of line, please press one. To get kicked out of line right now, please press two. To talk to an incompetent sales call center agent who can't help but will kick you out of line, please press three. Thanks for calling. You will be now be kicked out of line. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no matter how much you pay for your phone tree system, uh, most of them are one, an instant put off because people don't like talking to robots, right? And two, no matter how well programmed it is, there are going to be people who want to bypass it and are going to just do nothing but obsessively press zero until they get hold of a human being anyway. Uh, and those are the kind of people that you end up talking to, right? And what's going to take the place of this mm. is not a person, but AI is going to do that. I've already had calls from AI. And when, ah. give, and when you give them, I mean, they sound good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up until you give them data they don't know what to do with, and they just sit there and say nothing. Yeah. And I hang up. Well, I would not be the first one to do AI. I think that's uh, no, but still got a ways to go. But it's going there. It could. No, it will. It will. But as a, a marketing professional, I can't yeah. advise that you use something. No, no, that's, that's not what, I'm, that's not what I'm customer. saying. But that's what a lot of companies are, are doing and working on right now. Exactly. Well, it will come to that eventually, but uh, for now, I think you know our 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 advice is really not to use anything automated until they get much better, yep. right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, some folks, especially people in insurance, um, you know, other solo professionals, you know, who don't really have much of an office, will sometimes just forward their office phone to their cell phone, you know, which is great. Um, at least it gets answered by a human being, but I have called um, professionals in the aviation industry, um, doctors, lawyers, accounting people, things like that, and have ended up talking to them unexpectedly while they're in their car picking up their kids from school or, you know, um, at home with their dogs, you know, uh, at the dog park, at the racetrack, any number of places, um, which is also fine, but it doesn't give the most professional impression right nope because you know then you're thinking well you know do i really want my lawyer my accountant my tax person my you know whatever uh professional person to be answering the phone this way um, and if they are handling my call or especially my first call this way how are they going to handle my files are they you know really going to be a professional person that i can count on right mm -hmm. okay so Forwarding it to your cell phone can work on certain occasions, but you know I don't know that I recommend that either, right? Well, it depends on severity of calls and what industry you're in and what yeah. business you're in. And of course, after hours, you know all bets are off. But you know during business hours, um, I think calls should be answered by a human being in an office. But sure. we'll get to that point. Okay, um, the third option is, or the third disaster that we run into, is calls going to voicemail. So you spent a lot of money on an ad or an advertisement or a social media post or um, an article in a magazine, you know, working with reporters to get that right and everything else. People call you and it goes to voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that really tells people that, you know, your call is not that important to you or you're not really in business or that you're not serious about taking care of your customers. And right? 99 times out of 100, if I go up to voicemail, I hang up. I mm -hmm. don't leave a message. Exactly. And then you're off to the next person on Google, you know, or the next company to see if you can find somebody who can solve your problem. Uh, people have very little patience these days and your, your competitors are just one click away. So you're saying they're not patient? No, you are not. <laughs> Patient, you are many things. <laughs> Patient is not one of them. Great. But, and that's true of a lot of people uh, in this back industry. Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. No. <laughs> and 
<laughs> this is not backpedaling. This is not that. This is and. That is true of a lot of people in this in this industry. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they got where they are and they're successful in their business because they are not patient people. They, you know, uh, they don't put up a lot of crap. Yeah, they, they don't wait they for things on. to happen. Yeah. They do what they need to do to get a problem handled. And yeah, yeah, I suppose you can call that patience or lack thereof. But the fact that they don't wait, that they make things happen, is is I think different from lack of patience. Exactly. So you know, if you must <laughs> use voicemail, you know, after hours or whatever, that's cool. But you know, you do want to return those promptly and during business hours. I, I really, really, really think that every call should go to a human being who is sitting in an office. And this is not as expensive or difficult as you might think. You know, no, there's it isn't. lots of ways to do this. You know, of course you the ideal thing is to have somebody um, an assistant or somebody like that whose job it is to answer the phone. But if you can't afford that or that's not in your business model or or whatever, um, there are services that will do this. And uh, very good ones too. Very good ones that will take you know a full page or two pages of instructions um, and FAQs and everything else. They will be personable and polite, and uh, you know will do their best to handle your calls in the way that you well, instruct them to. Right? They handle your calls as if they were sitting in your own office. Exactly. And, you know, people won't know that they're talking to someone from an agency. Um, you know, we actually use one of these agencies. It's, uh, um, I'll give them a plug. It's called Ruby. Um, we use another one called Answer United um, for two different businesses that have different needs. You know, the Call Ruby we use for people that need to um, uh, call us during U.S. business hours. And they're very friendly, very personable, um, follow instructions very well. Uh, and those kinds of things. The other one, Answer United, is a 24-hour service, but it is a little bit less uh, customized. Right, or customizable. Or customizable. So there's lots of ways to have a human being answer every single phone call. Uh, You know, and even if all they do is say, um, you know, let me help you make an appointment, or let me find out if she's available, or let me answer a question for you, or let me get back to you with an answer to that. At least you've talked to a human being it's a lot more satisfying, a lot more pleasant, a lot more comfortable for the type of customers that we work with. And if you're working with high-end customers, they have absolutely zero patience for automation, voicemail, talking to you in your car, you know, those kinds of things, right? Yeah, mostly. Yeah. And, you know, of course, there's always exceptions to every rule. But in general, I think this is the way that you should plan to, to have your calls answered. This is going to make a whole lot more sense. Um, this is an example that uh, that I love. This is a great story. Um, Sydney Biddle Barrows, a.k.a. the Mayflower Madam. And here uh, I thought this was a family show. Exactly. What are you talking about? The Mayflower <laughs> Madam. She ran a very expensive and successful escort service in the 80s and 90s. And uh, she ended up spending a little bit of time in jail, uh, but then became a marketing consultant and working with Dan Kennedy, who... Um, you know, we work with and we've been in some of his, uh, his uh, mastermind groups and other kinds of things. So she says she ran the wrong kind of business, but she ran it the right way. And everybody in her organization got paid really, really well, right? I mean, you can imagine this is a very high-end call center right? or a very high-end escort service, right? Right. Okay. Um, but the person that got paid the most in her organization was, guess who it was? No clue, except her. Well, probably her, but who was her employee that got paid the most? I, I would have I mean, a clue. you'd think it would be some fancy escort, right? But it was the person that answered the phones. Ah, nice. Um, and the reason was because, I mean, she spent a whole lot of time recruiting and hiring and, and, and interviewing for this, the right person for this job with the right voice and the right attitude and the right judgment and everything else. Uh, And this is really, really important. Uh, She spent a lot of time training this person because this person was responding to people who were calling based on a very simple ad in New York er, magazines and newspapers, right? Mm -hmm. And of course you couldn't say what kind of business it was because it was illegal, (laughs) right? (laughs) Um, So the person that answered the phone had to set the right tone make sure that she was screening calls very carefully and anybody who was the slightest bit 
uh, impolite or rude or showed bad manners or haggling over price or you know any other indication that this was not somebody they wanted to deal with she'd say I'm sorry there must be some misunderstanding let me refer you to somebody who can probably suit your needs a little better you know and what's interesting is contrast that with the rest of corporate America, and they pay, they phone answer the least amount of anybody in the company. Exactly, or they outsource <clears throat> it to a machine because that is the cheapest possible way to get the job done. Yep. Right, so. Your results may vary. Your results may vary. <laughs> But you think about it, you know, I mean, not that anybody who's listening to this is running an escort service, but maybe you are. And if you are, that's great. You know, it's good advice for you. At least it has a deal with aviation. <laughs> they're the only people that work here, right? Exactly. They're listen to this. But there are some similarities. We're dealing with high-end clients, you know. I mean, you have to take care of these people from the very first step. If you set the tone correctly and if you make a really good first impression, you're going to have a much better relationship with that person all the way through. Um, and you're going to set the, the right tone so that your pilots and your um, customer service representatives and everybody else have a better time with this person, right? Yeah, and what's interesting is even though we have, this has documented her approach and how much she paid the phone answering person, and we know that is not so in corporate America, much less in the aviation world. Right. The the CEO, the CFO is going to say, yeah, that's nuts. We're not going to pay them anymore. They're going to say that. Of course they are. But just imagine what difference it would make to your business if that person were the highest paid person in your organization. Yeah. Well, and you would have to deal with the fact that they understand all the things that she hired this person for. Absolutely. And if they could do that, they'd and be worth their weight in gold. Yeah, and had the expectations of that job set accordingly mm -hmm. uh, with that price. But yeah, so I mean, not that you should do that, but you should consider that approach, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is our process. Basically, um, same as, as before, you know, now, as far as the story What goes. happens if they're just listening and can't see? I'm walking through it. So if you're listening, <laughs> um, if you're watching, we've got a process map on the screen. If you're listening, what happens is the same as what we were using before. Um, we've got the steps are basically somebody finds us on the web, you know, using search engine optimization, or they find an article in the aviation magazine, or they find a social media post, or... Uh, we talk to them at a convention, or they get one of our postcards, or any number of things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the first step, and that's how they find us. But, uh, you know, there's other ways that they can contact us, email and so forth, but the most common way is that they pick up the phone and they call us. That's true. Okay. Um, so Allison at CallRuby answers the phone, or, you know, whomever is working that day at CallRuby, and, uh, you know, they do a really fantastic job of following our instructions as we outlined right mm -hmm. and they have a copy of this map as well so they know exactly what's supposed to happen so you know is this person interested and qualified possibly as a customer right um, or are they just trying to sell something and they're really good at telling which of those things is is the case right mm -hmm. okay um, if the answer to that question is yes this is a potential customer their instructions are to immediately try my phone say you know let me see if I can get a hold of her if I'm available and I pick up the phone, um, they transfer the call, um, then they talk to me immediately. So this is on their first call to our office. Mm -hmm. um, what is more common is that I am not available, I'm already meeting with a customer or um, I'm already on the phone or whatever. Um, in which case, uh, Allison will ask them, you know, do you want to make an appointment? And if the answer to that is yes, uh, she'll uh, find them an appointment or um, you know answer them answer their questions or you know do whatever so um, she'll help them make an appointment if they don't want to make an appointment she'll answer whatever questions they have um, and you know carry on from there let me start that over <laughs> <laughs> okay so um, if I am not available she'll ask if, if they want to make an appointment if if the answer is yes, they want to make an appointment, she'll help them make an appointment on our schedule, uh, which she has access to uh, using some software uh, that we use called Time Trade. It's a pretty neat, nifty little tool, uh, and it can tell when we're busy and when we're not, so it'll help them make an appointment. 
uh, and then she'll let us know uh, that they need to be sent a questionnaire by email uh, so that we'll be prepared for that appointment and um, she'll let us know that we need to send an information packet so she'll get their postal address so um, and then we send them one of our blue folders with all of our information in it yep. so you know that really sets them up well for an appointment in a week or two or you know whenever they're available and whatever is is appropriate and then we've made two warm contacts with that person by phone email and postal mail right yep if they don't want to make an appointment uh, and just have a question or whatever then allison will answer their questions as well as she can she'll take a message and then i'll get back to that person later that day so there's no voicemail there's no phone tree, there's no press one for this or two for that. None of that stuff happens to our customers under any circumstances, as long as they call during business hours, right? Yep. If they call after hours, then they do get voicemail, but then they get a call back the next morning. Yes. So that's our process. Um, is it right for you? Maybe, maybe not. You know, a lot of people have to have a 24 hour operation, um, so they can't do voicemail under any circumstances. A lot of charter companies and others need to answer the phone every single time it rings, right? Um, so that's one of the things that screws up marketing faster than anything else is just badly handling those incoming phone calls, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So big ideas one more time. Well, one more thing is to yeah. not, not answer them. Oh, yeah. Just plain not answering the phone. This person's mailbox has not been set up yet. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, <laughs> but we, we had a client once upon a time that, uh -huh. that said that they were answering all these inbound calls come to find out the person that was supposedly doing this wasn't. Exactly. So they were just going to voicemail or whatever and yeah, never yeah. to be heard from again. That's right. Um, almost so put them out of business. It did. Exactly. And, you know, almost every company that we evaluate in any way, and we actually do a, um, a service where we do mystery calling. Uh, and this is really helpful for a lot of companies. Uh, it's not a gotcha kind of a situation. It is kind of a gotcha situation, but <laughs> um, basically we'll call posing as a customer, uh, you know, with a fairly common scenario. We can work with you on, on what that should be um, and have someone with an unfamiliar voice so that it's not John or me <laughs> call the company. And then we go through a checklist, you know, and we also record the call. And a lot of business owners are really surprised at how badly incoming sales calls are managed. Yep. Um, and a lot of times it's nobody's fault. It's just that it's nobody's job, you know, and everybody just assumes that this is going to be handled by magic, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, and one, day, and one, <laughs> one client we had, they had engineers answering phones. Right. <laughs> and that just went very badly. Yeah. You know, they didn't want to be answering the phone, and it was obvious that they didn't want to be answering the phone. And they were talking about technical stuff and customers don't want that up front they want to know how it's going to fix their problem right exactly and you know also they were just you know not very enthusiastic about uh finding out about the customer they just wanted to get them off the phone as quickly as possible so you know the motivation of the person who answers the phone <laughs> is very important as well uh and in a lot of cases your engineers want to be building things they don't want to be answering the phones yeah. and that's the wrong person uh, to have doing the job. So, um, big ideas from this episode. We spend a lot of time and money encouraging more inbound calls, right? Yes. And uh, if you handle those badly, <laughs> if those inbound calls are an incredibly valuable source of sales. Uh, but most companies in the aviation industry handle them really, really, really badly. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Okay. So those are the big ideas from this episode. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, and please also leave us a review. That's how um, other people find us. And we stop making bad, uh, what we call random acts of marketing, one of which is <laughs> badly handling your inbound calls, right? Exactly. And if the um, industry improves, the whole uh, rest of the economy improves. It's, it's good for all of us when when we all do a better job, right? Absolutely. Okay. Have a great afternoon. I'll see you later. Ciao. Thanks for joining us for Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the best place to learn what really works in sales and marketing in the aviation industry. Remember to subscribe on iTunes and leave a rating.
yakın.